$40,000 all day long. Oh, wow. That's good for me. I expected about 30. Drop a like to this video if you're a fan of Pawn Stars. Hey there everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video on Film Top. Throughout the 17 seasons, Pawn Stars fans have observed Rick Harrison and his family run the gold and silver pawn shop in Las Vegas. Apart from being popular TV personalities, the Pawn Star cast members are businessmen first and hence, we've watched them take advantage of certain scenarios to make maximum profit. Here are the 8 of the worst lowball offers made on Pawn Stars. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Alright, now let's begin. Number 8. Leroy's Painting In season 14, a brilliantly colored painting originally created by Leroy Neiman was brought to the gold and silver pawn shop. Featuring Marilyn Monroe, the piece of art was called Happy Birthday President, and the seller was seeking $6,000 for it. Corey called an expert in order to authenticate the painting and turns out, Leroy's painting could actually be worth up to $7,500. That said, Corey made an excuse that getting the artwork framed and hiring someone to sell it would cost him extra so he was only willing to pay $2,500, which is insanely low. In the end, the seller got only $3,000, which is half of what the painting actually deserved. I'd like to offer you $2,500. I might be able to get six, but that's after I frame it, pay someone to sell it, everything else. So I'm thinking $25. Number 7. Statue of Liberty Painting the episode title Pawn of Liberty features a man named Billy who approached Rick with Peter Max's original Statue of Liberty painting, demanding a whopping $35,000 for it. Rick instantly refused and called in the fine art appraiser, Brad Emelli, for advice. Brad confirmed that the painting has immense market value and was easily worth around $25,000. Even then, Rick was only willing to pay $10,000. The deal was sealed at $12,000, which is still low considering the painting's worth. Money, you can walk out of here. I'm stuck with it. I hang it on my wall. And if it doesn't sell, it's my problem. And you walk away with cash. All right, you got a deal. Number 6. Batman and Joker Guitar Set Designed and built by John Ballin, an original Batman and Joker guitar set was brought to the pawn shop by a seller named Terry, who asked Corey for a straight $15,000. However, upon seeking the advice of his guitar expert at Cowdown Guitars, Jesse Moroso, Corey only offered $7,500. Later, the owner of Balling Guitars, John Ballin, himself arrived at the pawn store and confirmed the set to be authentic and worthy, but Corey refused to raise the offer. Terry was not ready to settle for less, and hence he left the store without making a deal. I know a Batman sold for $7,500 by itself once. I definitely would not sell them for $7,500. Yeah. Number 5. Signed Led Zeppelin Album When a customer named Robert brought in a signed Led Zeppelin album, no one expected that a simple conversation would turn into an argument. Rick's expert Steve Grad estimated the value of the album to be no more than $12,000, while Robert had made a demand of $22,000. Blaming Grad and saying that he was not an actual appraiser, Robert started an argument, after which Steve seemed quite offended. In the end, Rick made a final offer of $8,000, which was refused by Robert. <laughs> and no, with all due respect, Absolutely. You know, I understand you're a signature person. Yeah. You're not really an appraiser. Uh, no, I, I actually take Number 4. 1842 Book of Mormon one of the most regular and favorite customers on Pawn Stars, Adam approached Rick with a 5th edition copy of the Book of Mormon in Season 10. Considering it was the last copy printed during the religious scholar Joseph Smith's lifetime, the book was easily worth $40,000, according to Rick's expert Rebecca. Compared to the historic document's market value, Adam had only asked for $25,000 and even then, Rick got him agreed to $24,000. Number 3. Madonna's Diary Having been referred to as the Queen of Pop in the 1980s, American singer and songwriter Madonna was one of the most impactful figures in the music industry. 
Therefore, it's obvious that any of her belongings still holds a lot of value. A seller arrived at the gold and silver pawn shop with Madonna's personal diary and planner from 1988, which included numbers of Hollywood celebrities and shoot dates. However, upon hearing a demand of $25,000, Cora's expressions of pure shock made little sense. Upon calling the expert Steve Gred, the seller was told that Madonna's diary would be bought for a maximum of $12,000. It was expected that Corey would make an offer around this range, but he was only ready to pay $4,000. The seller clearly told Corey how this offer was an insult to Madonna's fans. I'd give you like four grand for it. It's insulting, to be honest with you. It's worth a lot more than that. I go down to t number two, Jody Maggio's baseball. In season one, a customer brought a 1951 baseball, which was originally signed by the legendary baseball player Jody Maggio. The baseball's value was also higher because of the New York Yankees, for whom Joe played, had won the World Baseball Series that year. After authentication from an expert, the old man offered $800, whereas the customer who knew the actual worth of the baseball was demanding no less than $3,000. Therefore, when he saw that he was about to get scammed, the customer was compelled to walk out of the pawn shop. Number 1. 1890 Hotchkiss Cannon Shown in the television pilot of the series, this one was probably the first ever scam on Pawn Stars. An 1890 Hotchkiss two-pound cannon, which had great value due to its close link to the historic Battle of San Juan Hill, was offered to the Pawn Stars. Even though the expert at Gold and Silver Pawn Shop appraised the cannon for $40,000, the customer was paid $30,000 by the Harrisons. $40,000 all day long. Oh wow, that's good for me. I expected about 30. History Channel's famous Pawn Stars cast is surely great at earning profitable business while handling customers and making deals. Turns out most of the time their scam game is on point. Well, this brings us to the end of our video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't liked the video yet, so it's never too late. Give it a thumbs up, people. We will see you soon in another video. Until then, take care and goodbye.